Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about the accessories that I've added that I consider to be crucial, must have, essential. I don't know how to make it any more uh, demonstrative. And I'm not talking about slip on mufflers, cams, tuners, free flow air cleaners, none of that. So these are accessories that I've added to the Black Pearl here that I consider to be essential. And number one on my list is a rider's backrest. Now let me tell you why that is. You know, when I bought my first Harley, it was a Road King Custom. It was black, it had a lot of chrome on it. Uh, it had wide beach bar style handlebars. It had a big chrome nacelle uh, headlight, uh, leather wrap bags. And so I was very proud of this bike. And so shortly thereafter, I went down to uh, Daytona Beach to Daytona Bike Week in 2008. And so I was all about cool back then, okay? So I rode down there. I had a great time riding around the area, experiencing bike rallies for the first time. And while I was there, I saw this beautiful Road King get back down off of a, a trailer. And this thing was just gorgeous. And then all of a sudden I noticed it had a brighter's backrest on it. And, you know, under my breath, I kind of scoffed. You know, the first thing I thought of is I've never seen a backrest on a bike, but then I thought about this old gold wing that I saw and I thought, gosh, you know, that looks like a captain's chair. So under my breath, I was going, geez, man, this guy's turning that beautiful Road King into a geezer glide. So when I rode back home, all those hundreds of miles back from Florida, all the way back up to Ohio, my back taught me a very valuable lesson that a rider's backrest is an essential item when it comes to touring. And that's the kind of riding that I wanted to do. So I bought one from Harley and had it installed from the dealer at that point in time. It was fixed. I think it would go up and down, but it wouldn't go forward and back. It wasn't really adjustable like that. From that point on, I've never owned a motorcycle since that didn't have a rider's backrest. It's an essential accessory when it comes to touring on a Harley Davidson or any motorcycle that you're going to ride long distance. Now let me talk about number two on my list. Number two on my list is foot supports. Some people call them highway pegs. Some mount them up on the uh, engine guards. For me, I've had both. I've got highway pegs that are Harley brand on my uh, 2013 Street Glide mounted to the engine guard. And on the Black Pearl here, I bought the Ciro 3D uh, footboard supports that mount to the frame and they extend out in front of the footboards. And I could not be more pleased with that setup. It doesn't take up space on your engine guard. It provides for me the very best physical uh, support of my feet. It allows me to adjust. I can use them in a lot of different ways, but it gives me a lot of variety when I'm riding down the highway to either put my heel, my toe, extend slightly off the footboard of the bike, and just gives me a lot of comfort. So I bought these from Amazon, and the support frames, they come in two pieces, basically the support frame that mounts to the frame, and then the actual, whether you use a peg or a mini footboard. Now I bought the mini footboards, and, I've, and it was absolutely the right thing to do for me. So the first set of supports I bought uh, came through Amazon, and the only problem I had was the powder coat had extended into the threads in the mounting hardware. Well, I sent them back immediately and returned them through Amazon. Within a couple of days, I had a new set, perfect, everything great. So let me just say this. It's the very best support when it comes to touring long distance. It, it allows me to extend my distance between gas stops. It allows for multiple adjustments to get in the position that I really like and it's just very comfortable. I feel like the board is supporting me rather than me trying to fit my feet to a highway peg that uh, I just can't seem to get correct. These are just a very comfortable accessory when it comes to touring. Now, number three on my list is handlebars. Now, I went with the KST Customs bars and I went with their 12-inch uh, Mayhem Bagger bars. These get my hands up uh, just below my shoulder level and I love them. I installed these myself uh, last winter, and this year is when I got most of the mileage using these bars. And the real test was when we went to Glacier this past uh, August. 
you know, several hundred miles north up to uh, Glacier National Park, rode for a week all around the area and then several hundred miles back home. And it was night and day as far as these bars go. So they're a little difficult to install. It's well worth it when you need a little garage therapy. So you can take a few days through the winter or whenever and, and fish the wires through the bars and install them on your bike. The challenge with putting new bars on your bike is there's not much room for trial and error. You know, the best thing you can hope for is to find some used bikes at your local shop that you can you know, kind of sit on, put your hands on the bars and, and, and test a little bit. Or if your friends have a bike that already have bars on it that you can test and take for a test ride. Uh, but the thing about it is if you have to extend the cables and buy new bars and pay, if you pay someone to install them, you're well into $1,000, $1,500. And that's a big investment if you find out later that it, it just doesn't suit you. So that's the challenge. If the opportunity doesn't present itself to where you can ride someone else's bike with raised bars, is to buy bars that are slightly lower than your shoulder level so that your arms are sloping down just slightly. And that's the best advice I can give. But for me, I love them. So much so that I bought a set and put them on my 2013 Street Glide as well. Now granted, I went a little bit lower on that bike because of the way it sits. So I've just got 10 inch bars. If I'd gone any higher on the Street Glide, I would have had to extend my cables and my brake lines and my clutch cable and those kind of things. And so I went as high as I could without having to extend the cables. These next three items I'm going to talk about, they come standard on the high-end Harley touring bikes, whether it be like my Ultra Limited here or a Road Glide Limited. Some of the other bikes that aren't full touring bikes or full touring dressers, you're not going to see a lot of these features, or you may see one of them. Now, those are heated grips, cruise control, and very good wind protection. So let me go through each of these. I consider these to be essential. So if you're going to have these on your bike and they don't come standard, it's going to be a very big price tag. Now on my Street Glide, I added heated grips on that bike. It already had cruise control, but I added heated grips. And as I recall, it was, it was a few hundred dollars to buy it and have it installed on that bike. But I'm going to tell you what, it was absolutely worth it. You know, what these heated grips allow me to do is maybe extend my riding period into the cooler months, closing into winter and to maybe get out a little bit sooner in the spring, but it gives me a lot of comfort when I'm riding when I've got heated grips. The other thing I really like about it is, is maybe it's not the coldest part of the year, but if it's raining and you're riding in the wind, your gloves are wet, uh, it, it's just night and day to keep your hands comfortable. I recall a time when I was riding in Colorado with Roxy on the back. It was just raining so hard, and there was no place to get off the road. It was a two-lane road, traffic was heavy, there was no overpass that I could duck under. There was just no place I could duck off, so I had to just tough it out and, and be as safe as I could. But those heated grips just really helped uh, in that particular situation. Now, cruise control, like heated grips, it comes standard on a, a, a Limited or a, a Road Glide Limited and some of the higher-end touring bikes from Harley-Davidson. And you might think cruise control might be a little unsafe, but I don't use it day in and day out. I use it when I'm taking long trips. And when I have an opportunity to have an open road and it's clear and I feel comfortable and safe, I use cruise control. And it allows me to take my right hand off the throttle. The pain that you feel in your wrist when you're twisting that throttle nonstop for 100 miles, it can get very uncomfortable. And I remember on my first bike, you know, you had the little thumb wheel that you kind of twist and kind of set your throttle. It never would keep the bike at a steady pace. So cruise control, again, I consider it to be essential. And lastly, let me talk about wind protection. Again, it's standard. Obviously, you've got lower fairings and you've got an upper fairing on a bike like the Black Pearl here, this Limited. You know, when I had that Road King, I was all about cool. I would take the windshield off and then I found out very quickly that, you know, I was cool for a short little stint from home to the ice cream shop. But when I needed to go long distance, there was no way I would ride without a windshield. And then with a full fairing bike like this, it's even much more comfortable. Now, on my Street Glide, it came with just crash bars, and I saw a lot of folks with little leather covers and wraps around the crash bars, just basically trying to block the rain and wind as it hits your, you know, from the knees down. But, you know, eventually I went and bought uh, a color match set of lowers, even put them on my Street Glide. 
because I was all about comfort. And you, you know, that particular bike, I had a removable tour pack and basically I took a street glide and I turned it in as close to a limited as I could because Roxy and me, we were always riding and going distance. All right, so those are the three things that are typically standard on a ultra limited or a road glide limited. That is cruise control, heated grips, and a upper and lower fairing. So let me give you one more bonus item that I consider to be essential, and it wasn't in my original list, but that is Bluetooth communicators. Now this is if you're riding two up. Now Roxy and me, you know, we don't carry on long conversations with our little Cena headsets, but what they are helpful for is logistical things. Uh, when we're trying to share something beautiful that we're riding through and we want to share a comment to each other or talk about it, uh, you know, a lot of times she is my navigator and very helpful. Even though I've got a little GPS here on the front, there's a lot of times when Roxy is able to talk to me and give me uh, direction, uh, you know, when, I, when I'm trying to focus on the traffic. So Bluetooth communicators for two up touring, I think is essential. We don't, you know, if my batteries are dead, I don't go, I recharge them and then we get on the bike and we go. So guys, thanks for coming along with me on this discussion. These are accessories that I consider to be essential. Leave me a comment, tell me what accessories you've added to your bike. Now in future videos, I'm gonna talk about accessories that aren't specifically for comfort, but they're for safety. So I'm all about safety and I'm all about comfort. You know, guys, please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate you watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up and, and share this video and others, the channel with some of your riding buddies. We'd really appreciate that. So when we put out our next video, y'all be on the lookout for it and y'all come go with us.